In my last video, Hyperland was updated to version 0.45 and some things have changed. If you get an error regarding shadowing, these are the lines you need to change. It's just a different syntax, it's nothing else. Hyperland devs tend to change those a lot, so if you want to use Hyperland, get used to it. It's like every time with a new version of GNOME developers break GNOME extensions, just because they can. This change is located in look and feel, or if you have it in separate file, I call it rising.com. This is it. Second thing, AUGS, you can see here what it is, was updated to version 2 and Hyperpanel only works on version 1. So until they adjust all the files for the version 2, I'm just using the simple waybar. So in this video, I will be focusing on theming your application in Hyperland. For that, first I need to enter some Hyperland environment variables. And the first three that I'm gonna enter are these ones. I will just paste them in the Hyperlink configuration file. You have a section environment variables. The next thing I want to enter are things for QT applications and one for GTK. I put the comments on the side just so I remember what they exactly mean after a while. And I will add one more and that is that GTK applications always have a one-to-one -one scale. And I will put this to five because I read somewhere on the internet that this is for the application that still use Qt5 and the Qt6 application will automatically use Qt6. In order to be able to team your applications, you have to install a few packages. Qt5 and Qt6 Wayland for Qt applications to run in Wayland. Qt5 CT for settings for KDE5 application. NWG look for theming GTK application and Quantum also for Qt applications. And there is one more package that is not in the normal Arch repositories and that is Qt 6 CT but patched for KDE applications. And once that is done, you are pretty much set to go. So in Linux, applications are pretty much made with JTK or Qt. For GTK applications, it's very simple. In your home directory, you can just make two directories, I, dot icons and dot themes. And to search for GTK themes, you can just go to gnome-look.org and under GTK 3.4 themes, you just pick one that you want. For instance, this one, you can just download it and you will get a compressed file. You just uncompress it, you will get a folder and then you can just copy that folder to the .themes directory. You can also install themes from AUR if you can find any. Getpuchin Mocha is of course there, so I will install that one as well. And now you can start GTK settings. And as you can see, the theme that I downloaded from internet is here. And also the one that I installed from AUR. I will just use Getpuchin Mocha. I like the blue one. The same thing with icons. You can just go to Gnome Look and go to the full icon themes and choose the ones that you like. And just a warning, if you want to search for a specific name, I've seen a lot of people do this mistake. You don't search here, you search here. For instance, I will just download the Dracula icons and now I will just move all these folders to dot icons folder. And as you can see, they are already here. So I will just use Dracula ones. And if I go to my tuner, you can see the icons are already changed. And the same with cursors. I will just install Catpuchin Mocha. And for this one, I needed to restart GTK settings. But as you can see, they are all here. And I will just choose Catpuchin Mocha malware and apply and this is pretty much how you team your gtk applications in hyperland it's very simple you have just these icons and themes folder and that's pretty much it there is one more thing you can change and this is this border but this is for hyperland and if you go under look and feel in my case rising.conf you can see these two lines color active border and color inactive border so you can see that active border is a little lighter and inactive is basically the same color as my waybar and i switch focus the colors just change and if you go to hyperland wiki 
And you can see that you practically have two options for colors, RGB and RGBA. However, here in the config file, you are not actually writing the numbers of RGBA, but you are writing hex value of RGBA. So how do you get RGBA to this hexadecimal value? Well, you have sites like this, where you enter your RGB colors and A is for transparency. And then when you convert it, you will just get the value that you need to type in here. So RGBA without hashtag. And of course, if you want to mix two colors, you just enter them and 65 degrees is sort of the, what's the word? I don't know the English word, but you can see how it mix it. And you can just play around with it as much as you want. You can do the same thing for inactive border, but I like my things simple. So I will just leave it at one color and that's it. And of course you can play here with border size. For instance, if I put five, you can see that border is much thicker. And if I put two, it gets smaller. I can even put one. And this is just enough for me. Also, you can play with gaps in and gaps out. Gaps between the windows are gaps in and gaps out are border around your screen. So if I open another window, this is gaps in, this is also gaps in, and this all is gaps out. So you can play with it how much you want. And of course you can play with rounded corners. For instance, if I put this to one, you can see they will be just square. I like my corners rounded, so I will just leave it at 10. And here you can play with transparency of your windows. For instance, I'm running here the foot terminal and more or less all terminals have built-in possibility to make them transparent. But let's say, for instance, I want to make this browser transparent. I will just change this to 0.7 and you can already see my editor change the transparencies. So did my browser, but I don't have to have transparency everywhere. You can also add so some blur. You can have animation or set them to false. Now, if I change to my workspace one, you can see that it just appeared. There was no animation and everything feels a lot snappy. Also when changing windows, there is no animation. So you can play with that as well. And here are some options that you want to play around. And if you go to their uh, page, here is everything explained, but I don't play with these things. I usually leave them at the default fault. The only thing I do is to sometimes turn them off. Now, the only thing that is left is theming Qt applications. Now listen carefully what I'm going to tell you. Don't use KDE application in Hyperland if you don't want bunch of pain come to your way. I will show you how to theme them, but trust me, with every single update, something gets messed up. And not only that, KDE applications have such a bad coding and their developers have so much skill issues that you won't believe how difficult it is to theme KDE applications. Not Qt, just KDE. I've been using KDE for a very, very long time and it's just getting worse and worse. You have been warned. So like I said before, these are the packages that you need to team application made with Qt. And this one is especially page for KDE applications. And these are the packages that you want to install if you want to have Dolphin sort of functional. And I will install two KDE applications just to show you how broken teaming in KDE really is. So here is the deal. You want to run Qt5 settings and under style, put quantum. The same thing for Q26 settings, you put quantum. And then you search for quantum themes. You don't look for KDE themes. So of course I go to Catpachin just so everything is the same. Here you have a preview how it will look and you just go to themes folder, then you download whichever quantum theme you want. You can also go to KDE store and go under quantum and here you choose one of the themes and then you just download it. It can be in downloads folder, it doesn't matter. And when you download it, your quantum theme, you just run quantum manager, select quantum theme folder. You just choose the folder and then install this theme. And then you go to change theme and here you choose 
your team that you installed and then just use this team and right away everything exchanged on preview everything looks good you can also configure the active team for instance put transparency and stuff like that but for now i won't touch anything so now when you start dolphin it completely ignores everything you put there you know what does help in your home.config file in dolphin RC, you add these two lines, and this is the name of your team in Quantum. Now, when you save it, start the Dolphin again, it's just fine. Now, let's start another KD applications, for instance, Kvrite. Of course, why would it follow the Qt settings when it can have the mind of its own? So, here you can go to application style and Quantum. And for some reason, editor automatically changes to breeze dark fine although there is quantum dark and there is quantum that should be light but okay so i don't like this ugly great background and i want to change that and for that you go to edit color theme and i will change it to tokyo night and this is okay for me if i type some letters just fine so i go and quit the cave right i won't save the file i start the cave right again goodbye my editor team somehow it won't remember which team you put and i really didn't have the will to go and explore in which file kd decided to put this to be remembered when you change it and you might notice that icons are set for light theme but if i change it to qt6 city style then it's okay then it respects what i put there but if you restart it and you can see that qt6 city style that was working just a second ago that doesn't work anymore and core scheme is not remembered but now when i put it to quantum for some reason now quantum works i start it again settings application style now it's quantum qt6 now it's qt6 don't even ask me in which files this is saved or how does it remember what it remembers but it's a nightmare let's start kate as you can see you have here multiple let's sort of say themes you notice this this part is a little different than the rest of it that is window color scheme and currently set to my breeze dark color if i put it to quantum it changes to quantum default theme not the one that i chose to use but the default one i don't know why this is not visible is it this hyperland problem kde problem i don't really care if i put this to amy dark it changes just this part and also if you change editor team now all looks sort of okay but of course if you quit kate and run it again editor team is not remembered and if you go to application style anything you change won't affect the style that much so let me start qb torrent that is qt application and as you can see right out of the box it doesn't have any problems with teams that i set up in hyperland and since all this took me a uh, quite a long time just trying things out on different distributions kd pre-installed pre or kd not pre-installed kd applications are just a nightmare and i even tried this pre-configured uh, dots so to say my linux for work is one of the best but he doesn't use kde applications at all so the result was the same the one that uses dolphin and has it themed quite nice is this uh, hide dots but in his dots i had problem with color of fonts in dolphin i didn't try the rest of the application and unfortunately i upgraded my virtual machine where i had his dots installed and after the upgrade to new hyperland unfortunately neither on the virtual machine or virtual box hyperland doesn't work for me at all not on linux not on windows i don't know what happened there i just hope it will be better in a few days and speaking of dots if you want to just to start with hyperland the best thing is just to start with somebody else configuration i highly recommend my linux for work dot files because he has these graphical applications where you can change 
change not only the teams, but you can uh, also customize inside of the team things like borders, uh, like buttons, backgrounds and stuff like that. About a year ago, when I first started with the Hyperland, his dots uh, was the ones that I used and I just looked at his config files and just choose what I like and made my own. This N4 I never managed to install. There was always some error and Hyperland would just not start uh, even before the, the update. These high dots, I actually got it running and it was okay until you wanted to change something on your own. And forget about KD being installed with his dots because that won't work. At least it didn't for me. The other dots that I liked was from uh, Yakulit and he has also his Hyperland dots with multiple teams and he has a GUI configuration tool where you can change some things. And unlike my Linux for work, dot files that work only on Arch, well actually his scripts work only for Arch, I'm sure if you want to use the dot files with some modifications you can transfer them to other distribution. But Yakulit has Hyperland dots or should I say automatic installation scripts for Arch, for Fedora, OpenSUSE and even NixOS, although installation never work on an XOS for me but I tried it on Arch and it worked just fine. So that is pretty much all about teaming your applications. Now of course this is just a scratch on the surface with teaming in Hyperland because every program can be teamed for itself and if you want to do most of your teaming alone just learn CSS it will help because more or less every application involves CSS editing.